Welcome back, everybody. Apologize for starting the video already on turn two, just about. Um, our opponent, as you can see, they uh, had a few connectivity issues. Uh, also, to address our last opponent, uh, match one, he did not come back, unfortunately. So here we are in game two, uh, game one of match two, and up against a red something opponent. I was also thinking to myself, I didn't realize it at the time, but we played a mirror match in round one, uh, both playing blue, white, and green, just different... Um, different, uh, I guess, extremes of each color. My deck heavily blue, his heavily white and green, I'd say. But uh, going forward, I expect to play against a lot of red and black, is what I was thinking. As no doubt, there were quite a few happy red and black drafters to get all those late cards going around. Wish I could have scooped them up myself. But uh, here we are, planning forward. Uh, it's regrettable I don't yet have any white mana. It's going to be difficult to cast some cards like Addison on time, but we'll try and make do. Uh, as long as the Scholar survives, which it looks like he will, I'll be able to hopefully continue to find what I need here. So, question is, are we going to use the Scholar? I think so. I really want to hit my land drop here. I'd rather it be a Plains than an Island, so if I find a Plains, I'll happily play it. I want to be able to cast Pour Over the Pages and eventually get up to six mana so I can cast two, three drops in one turn. There's our planes. I think that all of our spells are better than our fifth land, so I'm gonna go ahead and play that. And now, I think I wanna either play Stitched Mangler or Sleep Paralysis, something that deals with the Kindred. I can tap down the Kindred with Stitched Mangler. And then the following turn, I'd have like a Sleep Paralysis for the Scourge Wolf or something. And I can block this guy until our opponent gets green mana. It's not really that threatening. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, this is not looking too good already. Two wolves with an Ulrich's Kindred out. So I think I just want to play the Kindred, uh, excuse me, the Mangler here and tap down the Kindred. Can't block either, of course, as the Mangler comes into play tapped. But uh, next turn, ideally, we could find a land and play uh, Pour Over the Pages. Maybe have a two drop to follow up with. And then the turn after that, I don't know, play Avacyn or uh, two, th two of our three drop spirits or something like that. And just kind of play defensively until we can get a grip on things. Yeah, taking two here. If our opponent just keeps going mountain, mountain, mountain. And a four drop here. I think we're in decent shape. All right, Fiery Temper on the Scholar. That's good. Um... Yeah, I think I just want to cast Pour Over the Pages or Sleep Paralysis here. I think I want to play Pour Over the Pages to try and plan out my next couple of draws. And the next turn, I've got two, uh, three drops to play. So there's our, our lands we're going to need. I'm going to unfortunately not be able to cast anything this turn. Go ahead and untap these two. Discarding a Forest. And the next turn, we'll have a plane. So we'll have all of our color mana that we'll ever need. And I'll be able to play multiple spells in one turn, hopefully. Definitely want to draw, pretty much all of our card draw is gone. Not mind some uh, some big fatties like Addison or a um, uh, Altered Ego, excuse me. Mm -hmm. So opponent is representing like plus two, plus one in Trample, mm -hmm. I think here. There's no real way to play around that, I don't think. So if I block here and he has it, I take an extra two taking four total. If I block here and he has it, I'm taking four. So actually, uh, I guess I come here. Kind of force him to have a trick of some kind. Okay, double strike and plus one, plus one. So that's fine. I'd rather it go to the, that guy than to the, uh, the kindred there. All right, this is good. So we can play Puncturing Light and Sleep Paralysis together. I think I want to kill the kindred. Really hope he doesn't find a force next turn, attack and get indestructible. So I might tap down the Scourge Wolf. Actually, I'm just going to play a Niblis, I think. I don't really need the Paralysis just yet. I really want to kill Kindred, though, before he has indestructible mana up. So here, I'm actually going to block it. Hope he's got something to pump it up. And then I can Puncturing Light in response. Ooh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. That's good. All right, so we two-for-one him. Keep our Niblis around. And... Yeah, he's got five spells in hand that he just can't cast, but, uh, yeah, well, <laughs> there's Avacyn. 
Alright, so I'm gonna attack him with Niblis and then play two more Nibluses and then just go from there. Every time I, you know, play a card like Sleep Paralysis or the other one, uh, Just the Wind, you know, I'm gonna get an extra three damage out of it, three prowess triggers. And then once I empty my hand, I can just concentrate on beating him down and then having Archangel Avacyn to back things up. And I don't think he yet can kill me out of nowhere. It's gonna be very hard for him to do that. But wow. Two uncaged furies, fiery temper. It's a lot of aggression. Scourge Wolf is really strong. I think if we win this ma this game here, it was simply because of our uh, opponent getting stuck on lands here. So we could tap down a guy, swing for nine, play a Thraven Inspector. We could hold up Avacyn just to eat a guy. I think, let's see. So I wouldn't be able to play Thraven Inspector and Sleep Paralysis and Sacrifice a Clue. I'm going to sacrifice the clue right away and find a land, which I don't really care to do. I think I just want to get Avacyn down, so I'm going to go ahead and attack him with everybody past the turn. What could I possibly have? He's likely expecting like a Storm Rider spirit or something, but uh, I'm afraid that there's something much more grave than that. There's really not a whole lot he can do against this card. And then next turn, I think we can just kill him, actually. These guys are going to deal 9, and then Avacyn's going to deal 13, so yeah. If he just attacks, then that's pretty much game. Here they come. Alright, so here comes Avacyn. She's got a little something to say about this. Uh, I think I just blocked the Halpak Wolf. Saves me the most damage, not that I'm really concerned about that. Uh, I'm going to blocks. I think Sleep Paralysis is going to end the game here. Alright, so now we can actually do everything. So we're going to tap down the... He doesn't have any mana really to use this guy effectively. I'm just going to tap down the first striker. Not that I think it really matters. That's going to give me three prowess triggers. Opponent did very well for only three lands in play. I'm missing a color. I'm presuming he's, spl he's green. You know, either splashing it or equally it. I just didn't find it. He's probably got a bunch of green cards stranded in hand. But, um, yeah, he got us down to six. That puncturing light was a, a game changer for sure. Also, Avacyn, she changes games. Alright, so that went well. Um, I think I'm going to bring in Tenacity, possibly Strength of Arms. He's got a lot of tricks and um, fiery temper, probably, that I want to be able to cheaply interact with. Might even bring in Essence Flux for that matter. We can attack him and then exile it, bring it back untapped. And if it's Spirit, mm -hmm. which it likely is, um, then uh, it gets even bigger. And we can block a guy mm -hmm. all for one mana. That's certainly a consideration. Might even bring mm -hmm. in Seagrass Scob. It blocks the Scourge Wolf and can um, double up on another creature. Help block against something with like three power. Mm -hmm. Try and kill it. Silent Observer comes in for sure. Um, none of these other cards are particularly interesting. I mean, I like big bodies like Lamplighter and Snapper, mm -hmm. but they just cost too much, I think. So I think I can ignore them. So I think I want to bring in Silent Observer, Seagraph Scob, Tenacity. And I'm not sure about the other two. What can I cut? Definitely Pour of the Pages is a bit slow. Honestly, Sleep Paralysis is <laughs> not the most impressive. Maybe he has, like, aim high and whatnot. But I think it's worth keeping. The Nibluses are a little unimpressive as well. I've got so many other things to do with three mana. I think I can cut them. And I might actually cut a land. I kind of want to experiment with these cards. And since mm -hmm. I'm cutting so many Nibli, I don't mm -hmm. know if I want to pack the Essence Flux. Although, holy mo, that card with Avacyn is mm -hmm. pretty bonkers. Actually, I'm going to try it just for that, I think. You can also use it mm -hmm. kind of with Altered Ego. I can't, you know, put counters on it, but being able to blink my Altered Ego to clone something else is kind of cool. Um, yeah, I think I like this, actually. Cut a land for that. Probably white or blue. I'll cut a blue. So what are we at? One, two, three, four. Seven blue, seven white. And then uh, a blue-green. So technically eight blue sources. I think that's enough. I don't think I want to bring anything else in. I'm going to go ahead and try this, and uh, hope I get a sweet turn with 
involving uh, Archangel Avacyn and Essence Flux. Stay tuned, see if we find that together.